My name is Councillor Lisa Leach and I am the Chair of the Committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly and in regards to procedure, behaviour and evidence. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Council Solicitor who will give advice to the Committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. <coughs> to my left are the Council's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health, sorry, Health Officer who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the Committee which may be sought. The rest of the people you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicants or their agents will be invited to make representation to the committee in support of their application again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representation. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. With uh, the committee's indulgence, I would like to alter the agenda this evening, the running order of the agenda, as we do have people here for agenda items 4, 8, 9 and 10. So with your indulgence, I'd like to um, run those first so that we can let these good people go home. Okay, if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, this matter will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed as a subsequent planning meeting. Okay. Can I ask members uh, if we're able to approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of September? Yes, um, I have a I have actually uh, noted myself that there is um, a requirement for a change of, um, under page 4, um, point 60. Um, the second reference to Thornton Hall should actually be Thornton Manor. So if we make those amendments, we'd be happy for you to sign them. Um, just in terms of uh, members' code of conduct and declarations of interest, um, the application for um, application number 11, Burton's Food Pasture Roads, just so the members are aware, the applicant is GVA. So when you're trying, when you're making your declarations, you need to know that that's GVA is the applicant. Okay. Okay. Are there any declarations of interest? Chair. Uh, on page 118, uh, there is a delegated decision in the name of the gentleman and on the board director, the gentleman and so on, with the really appropriate uh, declaration of interest. Thank you, Stephen. Any other declarations of interest? No, thank you. Are there any requests for side visits? Yes, Well, Stephen, can I take your request? Okay. Um, yeah, um, clearly, clearly, Chair, there's a great deal of public interest in item number four, uh, Scotland Hall. Um, and clearly it's quite a complex um, application and even as late as tonight there's stuff on the latest so I actually believe it would be a great benefit to all members of the committee for the formal site visit to take place on item number four. Okay. That's the one I was going to ask for as well. Okay, are, are there any other requests? Can we approve that as a site visit? Yes, yes. Please, please. Okay, so for members of the public that are here for this particular application, which is agenda item for uh, Stoughton Hall, for the Causeway Stoughton, we are going to have a site visit, so we won't discuss that this evening. So if you do 
do want to leave now, then you know, please do so. Okay, the, the, site, the site visit will be on Tuesday the 12th of December, and we will be there around about 10.15.
We believe this proposal to be yet another example of overdevelopment in our area, which has been happening so fast without any respect for the environment or concerns of the local public. In response to the director's comments for this application, we would like to clarify the following points. Firstly, we are not alone in our objections. The petition was of 139 signatures, not 91 as stated, which demonstrates the anger of residents regarding the protection of the identity of the area. They expressed frustration of all the new infill building taking away the pleasant environment. Also, there are six references to the development as being two storeys high. This is incorrect and misleading. The plans clearly show that the house will be three storeys from plot ground level. The Heswell Society Letter of Objection also refers to the dwelling as being three storeys high. The director's comments state that a two-storey dwelling is considered appropriate to the character of the area. In this instance, as all other existing houses in Beach Hill Close are two storeys, three storeys must, therefore, be deemed inappropriate and would not be in character with the area and neighbouring plots by its sheer size and scale. So tonight, you are about to make a decision on a three-storey building, not a two-storey. To continue the point of size and scale, the plans for this house show it to be 12 and a half metres high. To make this real, this is roughly equivalent to the height of three double-decker buses being placed one on top of each other. At no point in the submitted plans is there any evidence to control the scale or to sink and set this proposed development lower into the site to help blend the house into its surroundings. The Hessel Society, in their objections to this application, state that in their opinion, the ridge height and proposed scale are both excessive and request that permission should not be granted. A three-storey building of such immense scale would inevitably have a significant and detrimental impact on the house's tall trees and river mead. Such a tall building would block out natural light. Also, Will's HS4 <coughs> criteria for new housing, part 7, states that adequate provision should be made for individual private garden space for each dwelling. The proposed plans do indeed show the provision for the new house, but tall trees will unfortunately lose all its present privacy to its only garden. Does the existing dwelling tall trees not have the right to privacy in a private garden? Wirral Council have a duty of care towards conservation areas. This structure will lie only 35 metres from the boundary of the Hesel Lower Village Conservation Area and will, therefore, inevitably make a negative impact on the conservation area by its sheer size and scale. The National Planning Policy Framework states that planning permission should be refused for development resulting in the loss or deterioration of irreplaceable habitats, including the loss of aged or veteran trees. The applicant states in his planning statement that he has secured permission from the council to fell two very large and very mature trees covered by TPOs. The two-year consent period for such work expired 11 days ago. These healthy trees have been reprieved. The proposed site has a restrictive covenant upon it, and whilst the planning may consider this to be an irrelevant matter, <coughs> we consider this application to be premature, as the matter is now in the hands of legal advisers, and we feel that dealing with this application could well be considered to be a waste of public resources. Decisions should, therefore, be deferred. To end, the general public put their trust in you, their councillors, to look after where we live and to make good decisions on behalf of the public. We hope you will arrive at your decision tonight with integrity. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the committee for listening tonight. Thank you very much. Is the applicant's our agent here? Would you like to come forward to speak? If you could just uh, 
speaking name and the game to five minutes. The microphone was Chair and members of the committee, good evening. I'm Philip Lundor and speak on behalf of the African Assistant Agents. My address is Semico Bell in Liverpool. The application is for outline planning permission for a detached family dwelling with all matters reserved except for access and scale. The committee is therefore asked to approve the principle of residential development in this primarily residential area with all detailed design matters reserved for future approval. The proposed house is sited on a plot which currently forms the side garden of Furs Hill, a residential property on Wall Break. It is a logical annexation of the garden of Coast Dwelling. <coughs> As the plot has a road frontage on Speechfield Close, this is not a proposal for backland development. Furs Hill occupies a very large area of land of approximately 1.23 acres. The proposed dwelling house will occupy a plot commensurate and in keeping with the existing plot sizes on Beachfield Close. It therefore represents an appropriate response to context and is in accordance with local plan requirements on density and with site planning standards. The interface distance with tall trees, a house which faces the site, is about 22 metres and River Mead to the rear is approximately 28 metres away. The distances to both properties in any event are indicative as this is an outline application, but both distances exceed the council's minimum guidelines. The proposed height does not exceed any others in Beachfield Close and is identical to the adjacent dwelling pine, pine roof. A number of representations received refer to the loss of trees. The applicant has already secured permission from the council to fell two storm damaged large pine trees at the rear of the site, which are protected by a tree preservation order. The removal of these trees is not required to accommodate the development. Some objectors refer to a restricted covenant, but this is not a relevant planning consideration. There is a significant petition against this proposal, which is for one house in a close that serves only five properties. Many of the signatories come from far and wide and in some cases outside of the borough, so clearly will not be affected by the proposal. We would ask you to support your officer's recommendation and grant planning permission for a proposal that is entirely in accordance with local planning policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a board councillor to speak on this? No. Um, I think we need to put things to clarify. Can we just ask the officers to clarify the, the size of the petition and um, also um, whether we're talking about two story or three story? Thank you. Uh, through you, Chair, we count the petition as 91 signatures. Um, this is not something I count to myself, but usually it will depend on whether we have addresses and postcodes. And sometimes you have an incomplete address on there. So I can only assume that that might be my previous dinner. But in any event, it's all the same. <laughs> Um, in terms of the height of the building, I said it's predominantly two storey. Because of the slope of the site, the frontage that faces tall trees and faces the road is two storey. The site falls away to the rear, so there is effectively an extra storey at the back of the site, a lower ground floor. But that, that isn't the whole thing, that's the rear of the site. The front is, is two storey. Similar to the panel next to the property. Thank you. Can I open this up to committee? Understand um, the large petition is a very pleasant area to live, and, and you know many residents are extremely protective. I think there's some confusion in, in as much as this is an outline uh, application, and um, when the, the real hard detail will I have to come back to committee for uh, further and permission. But listening to the officers and listening to the applicant and, and the objectors, and uh, the issue around the trees, it seems to be some clarity around that that the trees are damaged and ready to come down. The exact sighting and scale and materials will, will be part of again of the detail. And again we have the you know the old chestnut of covenants which we're not allowed to um, to look at really. So uh, my view would be very hard pressed to come up with any reasons uh, for refusing the as I was group from this way that would be tended to be available. Anybody else Endorsing what uh, Steve Banks has said over there, we are talking about an area which is capable of residential development, it's not green belts. Um, and this particular development is outlined, as we've said, with all matters <coughs> reserved 
The only thing that we seem to have been able to limit is the size of the property, uh, as seen from tall trees, who always where the uh, main objector or the petitioner seem to um, live. I can understand that it's, uh, nobody likes finding a large house in front of a view that you've had for many years that uh, doesn't have a, a large house in front of it. But unfortunately, that can't be the reason for the planning uh, committee turning it down. Also, as Steve has said, covenants are not a matter for planning consideration, they are a matter for civil law. And if you wish to challenge the covenant, you would be required to do that in the civil courts at your own cost. Nothing to do with the council. So, again, looking at it the way I looked at it, I can understand the concerns about the petitioners, but that doesn't give us a reason in itself for turning it down. And personally, I cannot see a reason for refusing this outline application as it's been presented to us. We will have the opportunity to, to turn it down if and when the reserves matters application comes before us and we, <coughs> you and the petitioners, are not happy with it. So I think we have to get to that scale. All we're agreeing now, in principle, is to allow a house to be, to be developed on that side. And I think that is the point that it needs to be given to the Chair. Chair, uh, before I perform with that group approval, just want to clarify for, for the benefit of, of the um, objector. You talked about a decision of deferments. There is no such decision in the planning committee of deferments. It's either approval or refusal. So we, we haven't got that option if, if people believe that that is an option. It isn't. So you shall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
what the agent said was correct, that the, the height of what we are approving in terms of the scale is, is not greater than the existing properties. In other words, that it's in keeping with the existing properties. This is indicative, though, because it is an outline plan application. Yeah. Yes, we are approving the scale. <laughs>
the scale as viewed from the front door, I'm still not 100% clear whether, whether, whether actually it's it's too large when viewed from the front door. That's the, that, that, that's the, now moving it forward. It would have been better with the public. Just press the silver button. 
bottom of the box and over there and state your name and address. You have five minutes to speak and I will let you know when you've got one minute left. Right. Thank you. Very Richard Moore. Secretary to the Question Park and Conservation Area Association. Our objections are for the parking facilities, there's none. Um, the actual emergency services kind of rolled out the time. If you look at the map where Circle Road is, going down Lower Road, road that's the only way in and the only just, way out. Just, just excuse me a second, uh, Mr. Moore, your microphone isn't switched on, so do you, your microphone isn't switched on. Just press the silver button. That's it. That's it. We can hear you better now. Right. Go on. The actual position there is the parking. There's no parking facilities at all. There are any more flats in the area. If you look on the, the lower road, the actual emergency service can't get up with any more parking. And Circle Road is the only way in and the only way out. Going down the lower road, down the lower road itself, onto the woodlands. So we are actually trapped up there if there's any more parking. The other day I was down myself and I couldn't get through. And then the position I was, I was late for an appointment at the doctor's because double parking is on that road there. It's very narrow. And also anti vandalism and everything else in the area at the time is terrible. The police are never away from the place because they're having to call them all the time. And we couldn't do it without any more flats in the area. So uh, I'd say if you have a look at the parking facilities and consider us up the top end of the road and not the bottom end, we can't get in or out. It's not very decent for us. And that's our objection. That's the road itself, and that's, that's the other thing we need to get down. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the Mayor to come Open drug dealing that goes on in the Woodlands 
have a rinse in what way, and the police were doing about it. Well, naturally, <coughs> and actually, we are doing a lot. We're working with the police to try and find practical solutions to this to make life fair for people. Um, and I said, but actually, you are part of the problem. I, the absent landlords from London, they said they live in London, whose prime interest was to get as much income as they could from the property without properly supervising their tenants. They managed to avoid discussing this further and move back into the property. As you were, the property is, in, is situated in the Clifton Park um, conservation area. It should be a wonderful, tranquil place to live in. Sadly, that's not the case for the residents of this area, whose quality of life has sunken so far below what most of us would expect. The character of the area is changing for the worse because of developments like this one proposed here. This kind of development also has a detrimental impact on the character of the conservation area, which has a wealth of history in its buildings. The more that developments like this proposal are allowed to happen, the conservation area will deteriorate and eventually disappear, and the wonderful history of our developments are very compared to the most. We all have a duty to protect our heritage, and we can do that by encouraging quality development. Members, please do the right thing here. Support our local residents. Thank you, Jean. Can I open this up to numbers, please? Denise? Just give me a Yeah, sorry. I mean, I've been around this area quite often with Jean, doing leaflets and stuff, and it is up to the houses down there are beautiful, but to me, this is an overdevelopment of the area. Do the officers know what sort of percentage that there is? In the flats in that area, do you know what and what you know? Like they have a national average, and then they have areas which are sort of. So do you know? Do you actually know what percentage? I don't know. Of these flats now, we don't know. I just think I think this. I would I would be on the ground to review this as an overdevelopment because you know there are beautiful big family houses, and it's it's moving away from that again. So I would be of mind to review the second point yeah. I'll just wait to see what anybody else wants to say. David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just wondering Yeah, I do agree, obviously, that the 